How's it going everyone? Welcome back to our next episode on how to create HTML and CSS. Now in this episode, somebody asked me to show you how we can create pseudo elements inside our CSS file. And this is something that is really useful to know when it comes to doing any sort of CSS styling. So I figure we're going to do that in this episode here. Now a pseudo element is a way for us to style a specific part of an element. So if we were to go inside our website here that I have in front of me, you can see that we have a basic index page and inside this index page, I created a bunch of examples to demonstrate what exactly a pseudo element can do to elements inside a website. Now do bear in mind there's quite a lot of pseudo elements you can use inside a website when it comes to styling. So I'm not going to show all of them, but I will show some of the more important ones that is used pretty often when you create CSS files and you know CSS styling when it comes to pseudo elements. So what I have here is basically a bunch of paragraphs and I also have a couple of div boxes with paragraphs inside of them in order to demonstrate some of these pseudo elements. So if we're to take a look at this inside the browser, you can see that if we were to refresh, just to clean it up a bit, uh, we have a bunch of paragraphs, a header, a couple of links, and that's pretty much it. So what I want to do is I want to go inside my CSS file and demonstrate pseudo elements one by one. So inside my CSS file, I'm going to go ahead and start by showing you something called a root pseudo element. Now I should mention before we get into this, that there's in fact two different types of pseudo elements we can use inside CSS. There's something called pseudo classes, which changes the state of a specific element, such as when we hover on it, or if we click on it or something. And we have something called pseudo elements, which actually changes part of the element where we can actually select part of the element and then do something to it. So what we're going to talk about first is going to be some of these different pseudo classes. Now a pseudo class can be defined with a colon and then the name of whatever we want to do to this specific element. So we talked about, like I said in the previous episode about the one called root and root is sort of a special sort of thing when it comes to pseudo classes because root is actually when we uh, point to a specific element inside our website, which is something called the root element. And the root element is the highest level element we have inside the website. So if we were to go inside my index page just to demonstrate what I mean, you can see that, for example, down here we have a div box that has a bunch of paragraphs inside of it, which means that the div box is the highest element when it comes to this specific section here. When it comes to the entire document, we have something called a HTML tag, which wraps everything inside the document. Now you would think that the HTML tag is going to be the highest element, but it's actually not going to be. The root element is one element higher than the HTML element. So when we style the root element, we can style anything inside the website. So we're to go inside my style sheet again, go inside the root element and say that I want to change the color to something like red. Then we're changing the color of any sort of text inside the entire website because we're styling the highest element. So the styling here is going to apply to all the sub elements inside uh, the root elements, if that makes sense. So this is what we talk about when we talk about the root elements. Now, if I were to go ahead and just comment it out and go down to the next example here, you can see that we have another pseudo class called hover. Now I should mention when we use these pseudo classes, we can just use them without having anything in front of them. Um, like I just did here, which means that anything inside the website, when I hover on anything, then it's going to make some kind of change inside the website. So if we were to say when I hover, uh, all text colors to turn red. Then if I were to go inside the website, refresh. If I were to take my cursor and move it inside the website, you can see everything turns red inside the website because I applied the styling to everything or I, I applied the pseudo element, the pseudo class, not the element to everything inside the website. So going back in here, it's probably better in this specific case to say I want to, for example, target all the H1 tags and then apply the hover pseudo element to it. Meaning that right now, if we were to go inside the website, refresh, I essentially created a hover effect when I hover on top of the header, but not anything else inside this website here. So this is a really used example of a pseudo element because we use hover effects constantly inside a website and it's really useful for you to remember this specific pseudo element when it comes to styling. Okay. Now we can do anything from changing color to giving, you know, different text sizes to, to moving the text around. So we can actually say margin, actually let's use padding, padding, 
left is going to be 50 pixels. Now I did zoom a bit in my browser so you can see all the text because it's bigger. So it might move a bit more than what looks like 50 pixels inside the browser. We can also go ahead and change the font size if we want to. So let's actually go ahead and do that as well, just to give some more examples here. So we can change the font size to something like 30 pixels. And if we were to go back inside the website, you can see that we do a couple of changes to this header when I do in fact hover on it. So we can do a bunch of things. Now we can also add transitions to make the hover effects more smooth, but that's something else for another episode. So going back into our uh, code here, I'm just going to go ahead and just delete these first two because they're not really that good to have when I hover inside the website. Uh, they're going to move everything around in my examples here. So just going to go ahead and show the next example, which is something called active. And again, I'm not going to show you all examples. I'm just going to show you the most popular ones inside uh, these pseudo elements here. So active is something that if we were to go on a link, for example, inside the website, I'm just going to go and refresh, go down to this link here. And when I click down on my mouse cursor, you can see that the text changes into green. And that's because I set the color to green when I click the text. Now, if we were to let go, it's not going to keep the color changed because it's not active when I let go of the mouse cursor. So it's as soon as we hold down the mouse, it's going to change color. Now there's also a uh, pseudo classes for if we did in fact click on the link, which I can actually show you here. So if we were to say instead visited, go back inside the website, right now it should change into green constantly because I am inside the front page right now and that's where I link to inside the hyper reference. If we were to go back inside the code and see, as you can see down here, I'm linking to the front page. So when I refresh, it should turn green. But if we were to change the link into another page that I created called contact.html, which I haven't visited yet, I can go ahead, refresh the browser. You can see it turns into the regular color. When I click it and then go back to the website again, it turned green because I've already visited this specific link inside the website. Okay, so going back into the style sheet, let's go ahead and go to the next example here. Now, we also have something called last child and nth child. And there's actually a bunch of different variations of this one. And I just want to show two different examples of them. Again, I will link to all different classes and element pseudo styling we can do inside the description of this video in case you're interested in seeing much more of these different types of uh, cool effects we can have inside a website. So with the last child, you can see I did actually select a a class, which is a div box inside my index page. And inside that class or inside the div box, I have a bunch of paragraphs. Now I went ahead and said that the last child, which is a paragraph I defined here, should have the color blue. So if I were to save this, and just to show inside the index page, this is the list I'm talking about, then paragraph three is the last child or the last paragraph child inside this div box. So it should in fact turn green or blue, I think I, I think it was blue inside the styling. So if we were to go inside the website, you can see that it turns green, uh, not green, blue inside the div box. I talk way too much about this green color up here. So that's another example. The next one is a bit more interesting because if we were to go down and show this one called nth child, we do in fact have some really cool things we can do here. Now, when it comes to nth child, we can do a bunch of things. We can either choose just a number, which means that the second child element, which again is a paragraph inside my second div box that I have down here, which should be paragraph number two, should turn into a specific color. So if we were to go ahead and just double check, it should turn into pink. I did actually save it. There we go. If we were to go inside the website, refresh, you can see that the second one turns pink. Now, what we can also do is we can use even to define that all even numbered elements, which means every other even. So turn pink. If we were to refresh, you can see that we now have two to turn pink. If we were to have more paragraphs, then of course, more would actually turn pink. And we could do the same thing when it comes to the uh, definition called odd inside the parentheses, which just switches it around. Now, a really interesting one is that we can actually define a specific number it should skip to do a, specific style, uh, do a specific styling. And we can also define when it needs to start inside the list of whatever elements we have in here. So if we were to go inside the parentheses and say I want to, first of all, start at 
zero, which means that we're not going to start at the first paragraph. We're going to start right before it. And then I want to say that every other, which is a two, every other number plus zero uh, is going to have this specific styling. So we start at zero and I know it's sort of backwards, but that's how I like to think of it. We start at zero, which is right before the first paragraph and then each other or each second paragraph is going to be styled so if we were to go back inside the website it should look the same which it does so we were to go ahead and change this and say every third there we go so now it's just every third and because i only have four paragraphs it's just going to be one style and we can also go ahead and say we want to do every second but i want to start at the first paragraph so it's going to start at the first paragraph and style that one and then go two more down and then style the next one so this is a really cool one because it really saves you a lot of time when it comes to you know styling a specific number inside a website now these are a couple of examples of pseudo classes let's talk about some pseudo elements now like i said pseudo classes is something that changes the state of a specific element but the pseudo elements can actually change part of the element itself so Going into the pseudo elements down here, uh, I want to show you the first one here, which is something called the first line pseudo elements. Now, when we create a pseudo element compared to a class, we use two colons inside right before we define the pseudo element. And this is something that's relatively new to CSS3 because in the past it used to be just the same for all of them, even though it's classes or elements. But after CSS3, we started using a one and two for class and, and elements in order to tell the difference between them. Now, if I were to go in here and try this one out, this says that we have an element called element-1 as a class, which is this line down here. Uh, I went ahead and said that we want to do something to the first line inside this paragraph. So if we have many different lines inside uh, the paragraph, which I don't have, but if you were to have, then the first line is going to have a specific styling. So right now I said we want a background color set to yellow and a color of the text set to red. So if we were to go in here, refresh, you can see that we now have this styling going on inside this first line inside this paragraph here. So if we were to go down, show the next example here, just going to go and calm everything else out. Uh, we can also do it to the first letter of this specific uh, element. Now, when I talk about these pseudo elements, I think I'm talking about all the ones there are. So when it comes to pseudo classes, we have a bunch of them and I just chose some examples, but I think I will be talking about all the different pseudo elements in this episode here, just FYI. So we have the one called first letter. If we were to save it, go inside the website, you can see that the first letter in here gets changed um, and just the first letter, not the entire paragraph. We can also, if we want to, if we were to say element one for this one, so that both uh, these two types of stylings for the first line and first letter is going to be, be, applied to this, uh, be applied to the same paragraph. Then if we were to go inside the website, refresh, you can see that we can in fact add both of them to the same paragraph if you wanted to. Now, the next example here is something called a selection. A selection is when we do actually go in and select by highlighting a part of a piece of text. Uh, so if we were to say we want to have a background color set to green and a color set to blue, then if I were to go inside and refresh, you can see when I start highlighting part of the paragraph, it turns into that specific styling. And it's not going to do it for the other ones because it didn't actually apply this to those paragraphs just the third one here so this is something we can also do now the last one here's something that is very used inside websites and if you were to go to any sort of popular website out there you could actually see by going inside viewing the code that a lot of websites uses this before and after pseudo element so if we were to go inside my um, styling here i'm just going to show you for the before because before and after are going to be identical when it comes to the styling. Uh, so I can just show you for one of them and then you can just use it for the other one as well. Now, when it comes to these before and after, we can go ahead and insert content before or after a specific element. And it doesn't have to be text because I've just shown you a bunch of text examples inside this website um, with no boxes or anything. But this counts for anything inside the website that might be an element. So we could insert, for example, text or images or links or anything before and after a specific element, whether it being a section or just a paragraph. So what I can do here is I can say, well, I want to insert something before element number four. 
And the first thing I want to show you here is going to be just regular plain text. So if we were to go in here, I can say we have something called content. And this is something that, again, has a lot of different types of uh, stylings you can apply using this content styling. I'm not going to show you all the examples because there's quite a lot of them. I will link to a place where you can see the different examples. So look for that in the description of this video as well if you want to see more of them. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you that we can insert text. So we can say double quotes and then say uh, this is a paragraph dash. And then if we were to save it, go inside my website, you can see that the bottom line down here is going to have, I'm just going to zoom in a bit, it's going to have some text inserted right in front of it. So we can actually insert text in front of our uh, content here. Now, if we were to go in here and say I don't want to insert content, I might want to insert something like a attribute or a link or something. What I can do, and I'm just gonna go back inside the index page to show you, I have a couple of different attributes. And remember attributes are things like the class definition here, the hyper-reference definition. If I were to have an ID set to something, that would be a attribute as well. I can actually go ahead and take the value of one of these attributes and insert as text inside uh, what we have in here. So what I could do is I could say, well, we do have an attribute so we can say ATTR parentheses and then write the name of the attribute. So we could say we have maybe the hyper reference and then I can go inside the website here, refresh. And as you can see, I went ahead and inserted the link for this specific link that I had down here. And again, I'm just going to point out, I didn't use the paragraph for the last example. I used the link, which is why we have a hyper reference. So what we could do here just to make it a little bit prettier is I could say space dash space, then go back in here, refresh, and now we can actually see something that looks a bit nicer. Um, this works for any sort of attribute. So we could go back inside the styling and say, well, maybe the class, refresh, and there we have the class name instead. So we can do this for all sorts of attributes. I do think that we could just go inside the index page. I haven't tested this yet, but I'm pretty sure you can do it. If we were to make up just Daniel as an attribute, say double quotes and say my name. Then we could potentially go inside our CSS file and say Daniel, save it, refresh the browser. And as you can see, we get my name inside the text here. Now, the reason I wanted to show you that we can just create any sort of attribute is because we can do that inside JavaScript. And when it comes to CSS, um, I was pretty sure we could do it using our own made attributes inside uh, our HTML as well. So you can just make up an attribute and then write some content and then do that with that as well. Just FYI, if you're interested. So the last example I just want to show you is that we can also do this using images. So we can say URL and then I could link to a potential image. Now I don't actually have an image inside my root folder of this website. So we could, but sort of pretend that I have an image. So I could say I have an image folder. Inside the image folder, I have a image.png. And then we'll actually insert this image before the content, right before the text inside this website here. So instead of my name down here. And again, like I said, this is going to work with the after example as well. So if we were to go back in here, just go back a couple of uh, uh, steps and then say instead of before, I can say after and then going back inside the website, it's going to insert it after the content here. So this is how we can use pseudo elements. And like I said, all of these, I will link in the description if you want to see more of them, uh, because it's just not going to be a very short episode if I were to show you all of them in this episode here. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.